examine it thoroughly. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. I... Ah, good night to you. What a performance by Jeffrey. Outstanding. This is going to be a serious election. Because we have serious things to do to rescue Bobby from where it is. One of my avid readers of the article in The Nation reminds me every time I see him that I characterize the problems of 2008, 2009 as simply a fiscal crisis. But he also reminds me that I argued in the paper that it will morph into an economic crisis. Right now, we have one, an economic crisis. And some people in this country who are now speaking about the economy could have been truthful before. But have chosen now, when everything has hit the fan, to speak truth. The important thing in life is to ensure, if you are professional, that you do not compromise your profession. And some people have done that. But we have a situation in which I am fully confident that the leader of the Barbados Liberal Party, Mir Amor Motley, has all of the competence and ability with the support of her team to rescue us from this misery. The thing is that the former Prime Minister of Barbados, Erskine Sandiford, asks, how did we get here? Because we were promised milk and honey in 2008. We were told by the administration that came in that they can solve all the problems in this country. But we now know that Barbadians are experiencing hurt, suffering, and misery. And we can rescue it. But let me say this to you tonight. That even though I can come on a platform and make sport, talk about people, that is not my style. I am serious. I speak to you tonight on what has to be done, why we are in this condition, and who calls us to be in this condition. There are some individuals who walk about this country, arrogant as they are, ignorant too as they are, and pretend for the last 10 years that they had the solutions to the problems affecting Barbados. And what they did is that every year they promise something. We are now in our 11th year of a plan to rescue Barbados after being in power for almost a decade. Now, if you have not solved the problem in a decade, how can you solve the problem in two months' time? It can't happen. There's only one way forward, people. And that way forward is to ensure that you recognize that you are hurting as a people. There's no more need to educate you about any economy. You are feeling the effects in your pockets. You are feeling the effects on the roads. You are feeling the effects with your electricity bill. You are feeling the effects with your water bill. You are feeling the effects with prices for food, everything in this country. And therefore, there's no need you have one job to do. There's only one job to do. But tonight, I still intend to demonstrate with the presence of some charts, if the, Charlie, your system working? Let's demonstrate what happened to Barbados here. Because we are not in this situation 
because of any external environment. All of the other Caribbean countries are doing pretty well. And Barbados is at the end of the totem pole. Are you telling me after all of this that you can continue to say that there's an external environment? By the way, it doesn't make sense. Because the only thing that appears to be working on the economic front in Barbados is tourism. If the other parts of the world are not doing well, where would people get money to come from to come to Barbados? So it doesn't make sense to me. But let me speak to the issue of debt. It is up. The current account, Charlie, put up the current account chart for me. Is up? Is up? Under, under the last Barbados Labour Party administration, between, between 2004 and 2007, this ad, that administration ran surpluses that is, it had revenue above its expenditure of $119.5 million between 2004 and 2007. By 2007 to 2012, the Democratic Labour Party, out of pure ignorance, nothing else, carried this country down a garden path. And it is pure incompetence that resulted in the, cer the certain difficulties that we have now. So we moved from a surplus of $119 million to a deficit of $319 million in the next five-year period. Then, for the following five years, we encountered further difficulties of $555 million in deficit. But you know what they did? They taxed you. They increased your income taxes. They increased your VAT. They increased excise taxes. They took away your allowances and your deductions. They have not paid you an increase in salary for 10 years. So what has happened? Barbadians have been unable to spend money like they did before. And when during the last election we talked about putting money in the pockets of Barbadians, some in this country rejected the idea. When we talked about a stimulus, some rejected the idea. When we said that the central bank was printing money, an individual who is now speaking otherwise denied it. And then he agreed that every month the government is finding $50 million printed money to pay civil servants. Well, there's something called credibility. And the thing is, you should never compromise your credibility. When I speak on the economy, even those on the other side believe it. If they believe it. They don't ever come to challenge me on a calling program. They will not come because they know the consequences of coming. So therefore, they stay away. I'm sorry today, Philip, for inflicting a little thing on you, but you cannot say that debt is not a problem in Barbados because it is. The reason why we have been printing so much money is because we have all of the debt. The reason why we are in trouble with our reserves is because we have too much printing of money. The reason why the economy is not growing is because people don't have any income in which they can consume, and as a result, the country's economy is not growing. So people, you cannot say that debt is not a problem in the country. It is. But ask yourself the more important question. Why have we incurred so much debt, more than double the debt since 2008, but yet still we have bad roads? Where has the money gone? Why have we incurred so much debt, but yet still we have a poor sewage system in the South? Why have we incurred so much debt, and we have not bought one new bus in Barbados? Why have we incurred so much debt, and we have not been able to solve our garbage problem in Barbados? Why do we have water problems? Why have we not built a new building in Barbados? Why do we have health service problems in Barbados? In spite 
of all the debt that we have incurred. So something has to be wrong. Countries, you remember during the last administration when the government built Kensington, when the government renewed Oystens, when the government decorated Bridgetown, that they were saying that there was excess. Yet still, you can show something for the debt that was incurred around that time. And believe you me, when I was on the other side, I criticized the administration for increasing its debt. At that time, the debt ratio was only 60% because I could see ahead. But if I criticized the administration then, and the debt ratio is now, according to the central bank governor, 146%. So what should I do with this administration? But let me not waste all my time on them. The thing is, people, I don't have to tell you what you are feeling. You are hurting. There are people in Barbados who, even though they're getting increases in salaries, they are hurting. And it is easy. All that is happening is that we, do, we are not in a position where the government is giving us enough funds to be able to deal with the increased prices. And I want, if the system is yet working, Charlie, it is not, I will show you. It's okay, it's okay. Don't worry, Charlie. I want to just take you home now, because all of these big matters about GDP and foreign reserves and the fiscal deficit and the national debt, they are only important when you can look to your own pockets and your own circumstances. In 2008, January, when the Democrat Labour Party became the government of Barbados, you know what was the cost of a three and a half pound chicken? It was $14.20. You know what is the cost of a similar three and a half pound chicken yesterday? $19.77. So therefore what you're seeing is that in spite of the fact that Barbados have not had an increase in their salaries, prices have risen inordinately in this country. But let me go to a pound of chef fair, chef fair parboy rice to demonstrate my, my thing. In the 1800 gram, the 1800 gram, in January 2008, Chef Fair Powerboy Rice 1800 gram was five dollars and 35 cents. You know what was the price of a similar, the same thing yesterday? 13 dollars and 49 cents. So even if you don't like to hear about GDP. Even if you don't like to hear about the national debt, you must know, regardless of where you stand politically in this country, that you are in trouble, unless you are one of the privileged few. In fact, let me give you what I consider to be an indication of how this administration has operated by way of an example. There was a recent case legal case in Barbados. And I just want to tell you this, because I, I don't like really talking about people on the platform. But imagine, imagine, all right, imagine a lawyer fails to prepare his case thoroughly. Go with me, people. It does not mean that the client cannot be well represented after the lawyer has failed. If the lawyer fails to prepare a case thoroughly. But if you spend most of your time on public relations rather than preparation, the verdict will be clear. What has happened here, that is an example as, as to how this administration has worked. This administration has determined that it does not have to convince you of anything. The ignorant fellow that, shall I call him that? The fellow that wants to go to St. John to be candy candidate. Easy General Secretary of the Party. 
Democrat Labour Party. Every time you make a comment, they send a boy to do a man's job. They put a square peg in the wrong hole. And no matter what you say, he can find some silliness to interpret it as. And the interpretation is this. I went on the calling program. You know, I don't come in too often now. I went on the calling program to explain a few things during the course of the week. He comes in this week and he says that the party is planning to send home public sector workers. That was his interpretation of what I said. Now, you're all forgetting. But Chris Sinclair said that Owen Arthur, Anthony Wood, Tyrone Barker, and Clyde Maskell met at the University of the West Indies to send home 10,000 civil servants. Last time. He said that. So, the thing is now, they want to know what we're going to do. Well, let me just say, I, I spoke to the leader before coming here. We cannot afford yet to reveal our manifesto. That is agreed. But rest assured that the leader has had the benefit of reading the first draft. So the party has been preparing for quite a while. How much time do I have? Yeah. Because I want to make sure that I make these points very clearly. Mia and more Maudley, in the year 2015, asked a group of us, a committee, to put together a document called the Covenant of Hope. This covenant of hope was presented to the executive council, the annual conference, and it was ratified. I can tell you this, that I consider that stroke by Mir to be the master stroke, to be the master stroke in her leadership so far of this party. And I also can tell you this, that that covenant of hope is now serving to be the basis upon which the party's manifesto is being put together and is well articulated. Not only that, but let me say this as well. That in 2007, I had the pleasure of going to Washington as the representative for the IMF and Mayor was the representative for the World Bank. And we spent those days chatting. Now, at the time, I vowed to her that once she became the leader of the party, that she will certainly have my full support. And we have done so far a lot of work with, obviously with others, to make sure that the party is well positioned to handle whatever comes its way without leaking anything out, Mia. Let me say this, that for the last two years, not two months, Mia has put together committees looking at how we can get out of the present rut and predicament that we are in. So it is not a question of any fly-by-night anything. We have options. But we are not yet in government. No opposition is responsible for running any country. No opposition has any duty to come before a government to explain what it has to do. And those of you who are out there saying that the party cannot find solutions, that is absolute rubbish. And the thing about it, there are some of you who indeed should be helping this country to find solutions. And that's why we had to appreciate, no matter how we feel, the, uh, the likes of Wendell McLean. Because Wendell McLean always made sure that he gave the public of Barbados the benefit of his opinion. He didn't hide behind Facebook. He didn't hide behind a bushel. He didn't leave it up to an opposition party or a government to offer a position. 
He saw it as his duty as a trained professional economist to provide alternative perspective, and that is precisely why he was so well respected by the people of Barbados. So let nobody fool you as to what our capacity is as a party. So therefore, let me say this to you tonight, that we know precisely what we have to do. We know that Barbadians are hurting. We know how you are feeling. We know that you want change. But we also know that there's a process, people. And the truth is, I cannot see how any reasonable politician, given the circumstances confronting this country, can delay, can delay bringing an election because it does not make sense given the condition that the country is in. In fact, let me also say this, people, that this opposition is exceedingly responsible because we know that what has been reported in terms of our reserves, that that figure is not exactly the figure. And in fact, I'm going to explain why tonight. I was trying to avoid it. Perhaps I should listen to my leader again, because she told me that perhaps we shouldn't do it tonight. And I have to listen to her. But just let me say this. We understand the difficulties confronting Barbados. We understand what we have to do as the alternative government. And let me end, let me end by telling you, giving you an understanding of where we have to go. Barbados has to behave from here on in like a batsman who has to defend, but yet he has to score when there's an opportunity. So what do we have to defend? The exchange rate of Barbados. There will be no devaluation of the currency of Barbados under a Barbados Labour Party. There will be no devaluation. There will be no sending home of public sector workers in this country under a Barbados Labour Party administration. There will be a simplification of the income tax system so as to make life easier for all of us. There will be a better handling of the expenditures, how we do business. And by way of example, you cannot in the 21st century prevent ordinary Barbadians in courts from going to the University of the West Indies. And if only you bear with me to understand why we have to do what we have to do. I'm going to use some simple figures since the equipment is not working. There were 7,000 students on campus and deliberately chosen, 7,000. And we are going to do the math here tonight. The government of Barbados wanted to save $35 million. So therefore, they came up with a strategy to save $35 million. They forced each and every student to pay an average of $5,000 for tuition fees. So let's do the math. There are 7,000 has three zeros. 5,000 has three zeros. If we multiply 7,000 by 5,000, we're gonna get $35 million. Everybody accepts that? Good. Now, for every $5,000 paid by the individual, the government pays $20,000. That is 80% of the cost of tuition at the university. What happened is this. When the government instituted the policy, 3,000 students went home. 3,000 students went home. So therefore, 4,000 remain. The government therefore charged those 4,000 students $5,000 each and collected $20 million from those individuals. However, because 3,000 students went home, 
the government saved $60 million as a result of the measure. 3,000 by 20,000 will be $60 million. Now, when I hear some puppets, sorry for calling some people puppets, asking how the Barbados Lip Party would pay for students going back to university, I laugh. Because, you see, the important thing is to do your homework. Not just yap yap. You do your homework. So if you have a policy, you make sure that you're in a position where you have identified the financing, what is required, and where you'll find it from. If the government, therefore, has saved so much money as a result of its policy, it therefore means that we can afford, when we become the government, to bring back students to the campus without incurring any major costs. So I, I sat on this for months. I sat on it because I listened to the debate, and I, I said to myself, but what really has happened? Are these people thinking? Would a potential government in this environment go out and promise all kind of honey and milk? It can't. We cannot promise the people of Barbados honey and milk at this stage. It would not make sense. If we intend, and we intend, to abolish the National Security, or NSLR, and we will abolish it, it is the worst tax ever introduced in this country. It will be abolished. But I read, I read a character in the paper whom I don't have much regard for, who asks whether or not we will be able to find alternative money. But if you are in difficulty, are you going to promise to remove the NSRL unless you know how you plan to restore? So we'll get rid of it, but there's an alternative measure that will come that will yield more equitably the kind of resources that we need. So this is not a willy-nilly government. We are not just planning to become a government to trick Barbadians. You were tricked before. You were told everything would be cost of living. You were told that people were going to go into Dominica and bring fruit at low cost. Huh? You were told these things. You were told that public servants would get duty-free cars. Huh? You were told all kind of things under the sun. But this is not a time for that. This is not a time to come to Barbadians to try to hoodwink them into positions. You understand the difficulties confronting this country. And the only way that we can get out of it is if we stop asking labor alone to carry the sacrifice. Workers alone cannot do it. Workers cannot have a salary cut or an adjustment or a wage freeze, turn around and pay income taxes, pay VAT, pay NSRL, pay excise tax, pay increased electricity, pay water rates, and then they must die eventually. Not literally, but. So, the only way forward is for a responsible government to ask those who own capital, those who own the other input into the production process, to sit at the table and to finally be part of the sacrifice. When you talk about sacrifice, you impose all of this hardship on Barbadians. And when you had an opportunity to make an equal sacrifice, you took back your 10%. You took back your 10%. You talk about sacrifice. A prime minister comes to the people of Barbados and tells them, you are responsible for the state of foreign reserves. Look at these supermarket shelves. But he buys two Mercedes. He buys two Mercedes and tells Barbadians, all reserves are low because you are eating things from overseas and the kinds of things you're eating. But he's enjoying life. People, this is only the start. We plan to bring to you policies and programs that you will buy into because you know the condition that we're in. But I trust, I trust that that young lady, if I can still call her young, 
who for me in the last two to three years has shown me a side that I am encouraged by, a willingness to listen, a willingness to contemplate, a willingness to be thoughtful, a person who understands Barbadians, all of the pretension about being a Sandy Lane girl. Well, listen, we have a Sandy Lane girl who is more comfortable in town than any other person in Parliament. And that's a fact. And we have another individual who was from somewhere else who aspires to be a Sandy Lane. His whole demeanor tells you that. So don't come that route. Don't come the other route either of telling me about women and leadership. Don't come the route of telling me about a Christian. How could you convert an atheist into a Christian at one and the same time? This is a self-professed atheist that you're now telling me. I saw an article in the paper about how this man is a man of fear, faith and Christian values. How, do, how does a, an atheist become a Christian overnight? Because, hear me, even couscous grass is going to be presented now as sugar cane. Yeah. 